Hello everyone and welcome to another fine game we are going to cover uh, from the 2024 US Chess Championship. It's from the final round and we already know that Fabiana Coruana is the winner of the open section, Carissa Yip is the winner of the women's section and uh, yes, I shouldn't have made a video on her uh, great performance. She was 8 out of 8 and as soon as I made the video she started losing, she lost two games and then uh, drew Alice Lee in the final round. Uh, so I have jinxed her in a way but uh, not enough for her not to win the uh, women's US Chess Championship second year in a row uh, much like uh, our, our good friend Fabiana Caruana uh, but uh, yeah we all know that from the previous video now let's check out what happened in this game as uh, well you guys did not request it for no reason it is um, you know quite a feast for the eyes so let's check it out Grigori Oparin versus Levon Aronian uh, Grigori opens with pawn to e4. Uh, sorry about that. And also, big announcement, uh, I have finally stopped the camera from making erratic movements. Uh, I have figured it out and I now only allow it to uh, slightly follow me when I move my head sort of to always be in the center of the screen. Uh, but other than that, it will not make any sudden or erratic movements regardless of what I do with my hands. Uh, okay, th there was a little one, but no, no erratic ones. Uh, so let's check it out. We have Ponte E4 uh, and Ponte E6. Levon goes for the French defense and Levon is already, uh, you know, a pretty wild player, you know, playing the French defense. Uh, who knows where this game is going? Ponte D4, we have Ponte D5, Ponte E5 and Ponte C5. The advanced variation of the French, we have Ponte C3, Knight to C6 and Knight to F3. We have Bishop to D7 and Bishop to E2. Uh, knight g to e7, castles and knight to f5. Okay, fairly standard stuff. This is the other variation uh, of the Paulson of the French advanced. Uh, d captures on c5 with bishop captures and bishop to d3. Now preparing bishop captures on f5 in some lines. Uh, we have castles and now uh, a knight, uh, knight b to d2 and bishop captures on f5 are the two moves that have been played in this position. Uh, interestingly move that was never played but is the top move recommended by the engine as it often is, is pawn to b4 but Levon, uh, uh, Grigori plays rook to e1 and it is now as of move 10 that we have a completely new game. So okay, pawn to h6, stopping anything from coming to, to g5. Uh, we have knight b to d2 and pawn to a5, grabbing space on the queen side as well. Bishop to c2, hinting at uh, a possible uh, battery along this diagonal with some like queen d3 and maybe g4 to uh, get Levon's king in trouble. Uh, pawn to a4 and now knight to f1. Now even queen d3 could be, uh, could be an idea. We have knight to h4. Levon says... Uh, yes, you have a mighty bishop pair and you do have the option of queen to d3, but it is uh, it is me who's attacking here. And indeed, if queen to d3, nothing really is happening here. You can you can play a, a simple f5 and if e captures, uh, even a nice knight captures on f3 is sufficient. Uh, if g captures, queen captures, you can even allow queen to h7, king f7, and the king will nicely hide over to the, uh, on the queen side and the white king will be the one who's in trouble. So that is Levon's idea here. Here. Uh, Grigori says all right uh, and up until this point Grigori hasn't spent uh, a minute he's or he has almost full time on the clock knight captures on h4 here uh, first think of the game for him spends 10 minutes on this capture queen captures on h4 uh, and bishop to e3 of course as the threat was uh, something captures on f2 so bishop captures and rook captures you you could uh, also capture with the knight but that means you would have to give up the e5 pawn so rook captures and also the rook on the third rank uh, makes it possible for the rook to come to f3 g3 h3 whatever is needed we have pawn to f5 by levon saying okay if you don't capture i might just start pushing you know f4 g5 g4 and your king will get destroyed so e captures on f6 rook captures now levon ready to double up on the f file and pawn to g3 we have queen to c4 it is very important now to prevent queen to d3 uh, knight to d2 attacking levon's queen and queen to b5 we have knight to f3 uh, and now well queen captures on b2 uh, is definitely an option here the engine even likes it but uh, you know levon never the butcher always the artist goes rook a to f8 and puts pressure on that knight on f3 however for the moment it is is defended by the queen and by the rook so you still have to be you know careful but uh, it is defended b3 okay levon did not capture on b2 so he will not be able to do it in the future 
uh, bishop to e8. Now Levon hints at going bishop to h5, and Grigory defends, Rook, pawn to h3. Uh, now uh, bishop to h5 will be met with pawn to g4. Uh, we have queen to c5, and now we have b captures on a4. Here he misses Levon's uh, real idea. Queen to e2 is the only move that uh, Grigory, uh, Grigory has to play, but after b captures on a4, uh, now Levon uh, is completely winning, and uh, but he doesn't play you know what he should yeah uh, he, should, he should play pawn d5 and there's no defense against pawn to e4 you can't really capture on e5 because if you move the rook or the knight then you expose that f2 pawn and you just get uh, destroyed here so after b captures on a4 uh e5 is the move you should play but not levon again going for the for the most aesthetically pleasing move and that is queen captures on e3 giving up the queen uh, for the uh, for the rook and for the knight f captures rook captures on f3 and now queen to d3 preparing queen to h7 uh, but there is uh, no no time for that rook captures on g3 check we have king h2 and now bishop to g6 it looks scary as uh, queen h7 and uh, also king captures on g3 are threatened uh, but bishop to g6 solves everything we have queen to b5 putting pressure on b7 and now rook f to f3 and now Okay, bishop captures on g6, rook captures on h3 with check, king to g2, rook, uh, to, uh, rook f to g3 with check, king to f2, and now rook to g6. And this is the position, uh, what would you play here? Yes, it is very tempting to go after the b7 pawn. You uh, make uh, a target out of the knight, also you create a pass pawn, it looks like you're, you're the one even playing for the win here. However, it is the fastest way to lose the game, and it is exactly what was played. Queen captures on b7. Up until this point, it's still playable, but you have to, I mean, it's really complicated, but you have to play rook to g1. Point being that after, let's say, rook h2 check, king to f1, rook f6 check, you will move the king. Rook captures on a2. Now, not queen captures on b7, but rather rook captures on g7 with check. You expose the black king completely, and now you will be able to uh, draw the game. It doesn't matter where the knight goes. For example, king to f8. You don't uh, go to g6 because then, of course, queen b1 check will pick up the rook uh, on a2. But king f8 is perfectly fine. Queen captures, and uh, yes, two rooks are still scary. But the exposed black king and the queen having access to all of these squares on the um, uh, on the uh, your opponent's half of the board uh, will be enough to uh, to ensure a draw. Uh, but queen captures on b7 was played right away, and uh, okay, uh, Grigori had seven minutes on the clock. He spent four on this, uh, but it will not uh, it will not end well for him. Rook to h2. This is the only move that wins for Levon, but uh, not uh, too difficult one to spot. Uh, problem is, uh, you could go king f3, but king f3 now runs into knight to e5 check, king f4, knight to d3 with check, king f3, and rook to f2 checkmate. That is the problem. Uh, but when, you have to, when you're playing against Levon, you always have to check uh, whether or not you're getting checkmated in the middle of the board. So realizing this, uh, he, uh, he knows that he cannot go king to e1, of course, it's just a mate in one. You cannot allow that so your only move is king to f1 and now of course knight to e5 and what can you play well it seems like uh levon just blundered the knight queen to b8 uh, followed by queen captures on e5 what is what's the idea here that exactly that is the idea levon will now uh, beat the queen using the two rooks as the rook on a1 uh, you cannot save the rook on a1 you, you play rook b1 again rook to h1 check picks up the rook and of course uh, if you go something like rook to a1 to try and keep the rook defended uh it's not gonna work just king h7 uh, stopping any any trickery here and the king will not be able to survive there the knight will come to f3 rook to g1 the rook is covering the second rank this again is it's game over so queen to b8 check going after the knight king to h7 and queen captures on e5 attacking the rook but only now rook to h1 with check king to e2 and the rook captures on a1 and yes it's still a queen versus two rooks but the black king is very safe and he and behind the two pawns and a white king is uh, wide in the open. So pawn to e4, uh, okay, a2 cannot be defended, rook captures on a2 with check, king f3, rook captures on a4, we have e captures on d5, e captures, queen captures, and now rook to f6 with check. Now, you cannot reach the black king, and also you cannot stop the black rooks from doubling up on the c file, that means you will lose the c pawn, and then it's two rooks and two connected pass pawns versus a queen and the long king, 
uh, not much of a not much of a challenge for Levon. Rook uh, king to g3. We have rook to a7 and queen to e4 with check. Pawn to g6. Now no more checks are possible. Queen to d4 and rook a to f7. Doubling up on the f file. Queen c5. Rook f3 check, king g2, rook f2 check, king g3, and pawn to h5. And now you realize that, okay, that's pretty much all there is. We have queen to e5, rook 2 to f5 attacking the queen. We have queen to e6, and now rook to c7. And he was in this position on move 47 that Grigori Oparin resigned the game. Uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. So a classic Levon masterpiece, uh, sacrificing a queen for some, you know, extra material uh, and for some uh, interesting counterplay, even though there was no need for it, uh, you know, the, the classic e5 in that position would have done uh, the, uh, would have gotten the job done, but it's how Levon plays, it's why we love when he plays, and it's why I am always happy to show a Levon game. And for those of you who are maybe new to chess, I will show you why this is a resigns time. Like I said, the rooks will double up, uh, you cannot stop that, and the c4 pawn will fall. There are no checks to the black king, you cannot check him over this diagonal, you, you cannot check him on the 7th rank as the rook occupies it, you cannot attack the rooks, the rooks defend each other. So now it's time to, you know, for white to play some moves, uh, black will uh, position his rooks perfectly, try to win the white queen if you're not careful, also kick the white king away from the pawns, kick the white queen away from the pawns, and now you will simply uh, position your rooks so uh, the white queen can never deliver a check, and start pushing that h pawn down the board and the white queen will have to block it and now it's time to advance the other pawn down the board as well okay white queen will now give a few checks but it doesn't matter the white queen always has to return to h1 something like this and okay that's pretty much it rook f3 and uh the white queen has no squares you will have to give it up and then it's completely winning so it's very simple uh you know even though it, it may look like there's a, a, a lot of work to be done here yes some 20 moves will be played but uh, for both of them that's like a walk in the park uh, so yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. For those of you who haven't seen my previous video, watch it because, yeah, you know, Fabi uh, just played uh, the, the best chess ever and also I've shared a lot of info there. But for, if you haven't seen the final standings, Fabi won the US Chess Championship with seven points. Uh, followed by uh, a, a lot of people tied, like six-way tie for second, Samuel Sevian, Ray Robson, Lanier Dominguez, Hans Niemann, Levon Arunyana, Wander Leeing, and, Wesley, uh, and Wander Leeing with five and a half points, Wesley Saw with five, Sam Shanklin with four, Grigory Oparin, three and a half, Abimanyu Mishra, two and a half, and Christopher Yu, uh, a double zero. Uh, so yeah. Uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember, always uh, be an artist, never the butcher. And even though you might win less games, more people will be interested in watching your games. That's just how chess works. And why I always show a Levon game. Uh, like I said, he didn't have to do it, but he did it uh, for himself uh, and for us. Uh, so yeah, hope you enjoyed it. I would like to wish a very happy birthday to Trip Verd, and I would like to thank E. Killa, an anonymous person, Carlos Rudy, and Amir Kanchuk for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day. And we might even play uh, a few rapid games before the next big event. See you soon.